say, you'd have been recruited in an instant. Gruff and intimidating. I don't know if this Duke Ravenguard is the same, but I will say this. The Flaming Fist are the cornerstone of the city, and the Dukes are its foundation. I hope you can save him for the good of Baldur's Gate. When this land fell to the curse, I should have gone with it. Thaniel is the only reason I survived. It's only fair I stay here and wait for him to awaken. You too, my friend. Thank you. My mom lives in the lower city. Back in Last Life, I was racking my brains. How the hells do we get past the curse? And then a blinding light cuts through the darkness like a blade through butter. All thanks to you, I hear. Didn't think we'd make it without the old L Rider to lead us. But you did a damn fine job. I would. We didn't have any fight left in him. Briefest hesitation as Ceres wars with old loyalties and wins. I looked up to him. We all did. But he let us down when we needed him most. There are less mouths to feed, but we still need supplies for the road. We'll scavenge what we can. Hopefully, we'll see you again in the city. Something's on my mind. Well done putting Ketherick in his place. Couldn't have done it better myself. So? It, it's just Moll's eye patch. She's lost loads of them. That doesn't mean anything. Did you want something, or are you just here to stir? Exactly. And we'll definitely feel her wrath if she thinks we ever doubted her. Um... Now you've won, can we go home? Madge says it's not for... Wondering where the devil you'd been. Who? Oh, right. Well, forget about that, McGungus. We have more important things to worry about. Like Walbrin. Walbrin and the Iron Hand Gnomes are planning something dreadful in the city. They have room powder, they have motive. We have to stop them. they're a gaggle of vindictive crybabies with no sense of propriety. That is to say, they gabbed about their plans like a geese, and I overheard them. Like a very devious goose. <laughs> with the sword of justice in one hand and the shield of self-righteousness in the other, we most certainly will. To saving the city. And my fool of a friend. Feel that calm. Catherick's done.
thanks for watching out for me. What could have tossed me back in the shadows? We leave the heart of the Absolute alive, thanks to you. You did well to defeat Ketherick, but Ketherick was only the first to fall. There are many more battles ahead, and they will not be so easily won. You will need allies. Jahira's wisdom will be an asset to you on the journey ahead. Her harpers, too. Halsin's strength and loyalty will bolster you in times of need. But if we are to succeed, we will need others. Even if the buildings are demolished, there are always survivors. There are always those who will fight. Baldur's Gate may not know it yet, but its fate is bound to ours. Seek on its streets those whose purpose aligns with our own, and invite them to our cause. Together, we will put an end to the Absolute, the Chosen, all. to the town. If we hurry, we'll arrive before the Absolute's forces. If the Shadow Curse is banished, I like the dark, but not when it's trying to kill me. The Absolute's armies are on the march, and Baldur's Gate is their target. Awaited your arrival with great anticipation. Come closer. Feel my voice rattle your bones as I proclaim our victory. Moon Maiden Saluna, hear me. Catherick Thorn, traitor, apostle of Merkel, is dead at last. My mate, Most High. Darling Isabel is safe and well. Safe and well, and return to my embrace. Blessings upon the slayer of the wicked one. We are a powerful party indeed. Faerun itself trembles at our touch. My darling Isabel says we will stay allied at your side. I am pleased to hear it. Pray, ask. And I will tell. Do I not radiate with my mother's brightness, her glory? There can be no doubt. I am of her silvered flesh, her celestial womb. Why, she already has. She has brought her sword to your side, Dame Aelin. 
So mighty are her wonders, her great wisdom. Together, we will set this fair land free of tyranny and murder. <sighs> Ketherick Thorn, father of my one and only love, enslaver of Dame Aelin. <sighs> Ketherick Thorn never did trust me, even when he worshipped the Moon Maiden. He was threatened by my love for Isabel, by her love for me. When she died, curse the day, the hour, we each of us mourned bitterly. But Ketherick's pain could be touched by no aid, no boundary. He turned to wretched Shah, the Lady of Loss, for relief. And she whispered into his ear, poisoning his mind. He and his loathsome advisor, Balthazar, lured me into the Shadowfell. Claimed they'd found someone in need of my aid. There, they trapped me in their infernal cage. I was killed, murdered, made dead over and over and over by justicias of every make and kind. I was reborn, for it is my nature. And Ketherick fed upon my immortality all the while. But lo, the brute is dead. And we, we live! Be gone, friend. I have a darling to adore. In due time, Mother Saluna will tell me when the time is right. Painful truths should be handled with some decorum. Be gone, friend. I have a darling to adore. I am free from my bonds, but not my duty. The dead three are risen. The dead two remain. You must face them. I will help. Our thoughts are as one, my friend. You must face the Chosen of Bane and Baal. I will do my part to see them laid low. Pray, ask, and I will tell. Why, she already had. So mighty are her wonders, her... I can't believe it. I can't believe Aelin is here. And... my father. I heard what happened. What he become. By killing him. You set him free. You set Aelin free. And me. A great deal. But still... Some of the details elude me. Ketherick Thorm is... was... my father. He raised me to serve Saluna as my mother, rest her soul, had wished. He was everything to me, all my life. When an emissary of Saluna came to our little town, we were elated. Dame Aelin, daughter of the Moon Maiden herself, tell me. Do you believe in love at first sight? You sound like my father. But it was more than that. This was no mere attraction. It was love. Lucky for me, she felt the same way. But my father was skeptical. Aelin is immortal, after all. I understand it's strange. There's an imbalance between us, certainly. But I suppose loving Aelin felt the same as loving myself. It was natural. Then... And this is where I still need answers. I died. I'm not sure how, why, but all was black, black, black. Next I knew I was being jolted awake. I smelled musty air, I saw shadows. And then my father's face, so changed, so hideously warped. I didn't know that then, but I could see the change in him. He told me we'd be together now, said that Aelin was dead. I couldn't speak, could only run. I found last light within the shadows, made a shelter there, prayed my father wouldn't find me. 
By the time Jahira came, I'd pieced together just enough to know I'd been dead a hundred years. That my father was the source of the horrors plaguing this land, my home. I couldn't tell her who I was. I had to protect them. And myself. No matter what. It's all out in the open now. And with my father dead, I have nothing to fear. Except for Aelin. She needs healing. Rest. I'm grateful for your help. Your friendship. I hope we won't intrude on your hospitality too long. But I'm grateful for a safe place to... Well... Just to be. Looking forward to a bit of rest, if I'm honest. It's been a long century. I, for one, will miss the Shadow Curse. For all the pain it caused us, it did at least obscure the incessant sun. I take no pleasure in his passing. Whatever faults he may have had, Ketherick was a great leader. Of course. He ruled Moonrise for centuries. That in itself deserves respect. I believe he was an honorable man, but the gods used him as their plaything. First, Shah and her sister, then the three behind the Absolute. I sympathize. It is a sharp mind that feels sympathy for one who suffers unnecessarily, not a soft heart. I saw strength in Ketherick that had been diluted by pain, but I will never forgive him for handing me to Orin. For that, <laughs> I hope Merkel hollows out his bones and lets them be dust. You did it. Catherick Thorm is no more. The Shadow's grip is broken. Soon, the land shall heal. Not as glad as I am. Nature moves at its own pace, and bestows its bounty when it sees fit. Give it time. A reward shall come to you. When you need it most. Your path leads away from me, I sense. Be safe. Perhaps one day you will see the fruits that your victory has sown here. myself as a banisher of shadows before. <laughs> I was always more of a lurker in, historically. <laughs> the Orthon is nothing. I'll have my satisfaction when Raphael makes good on his word. <laughs> in an old pair of boots, in an abandoned outhouse, in my own bedroll. The devil turns up where it pleases him, but we're bound to run into him soon. Need something? I think we've done rather a good thing here. A welcome change to give this land a sliver of hope amongst so much despair. The Shadows are losing their grip on these lands. Shah can indeed be thwarted. Comforting to know. You wanted something? I'm sorry. It... The curse. 
curse is broken and the shadows are lifting. In time, these lands will heal. Once again, your mind opens to Lazel, and she considers the disc. More writings on Orpheus, the so-called Prince of the Comet. The Prince of the Comet, Part 3. The histories tell us that Commander Voss, Gestil Kithrak, pierced Prince Orpheus clean through with his sword of silver. That his flesh was torn and fed to the great red dragon Ephelamon. Vlacketh's faithful roar out this tale, but beneath the roars, we hear whispers carrying truth and prophecy. The Prince of the Comet is not dead. The Prince of the Comet will come again. The Prince of the Comet will liberate us from Vlacketh's tyranny. Praise be to Mother Gith. Queen of the One Sky. Praise be to your son, Orpheus, the true heir, Prince of the Comet. This is more than a fable. It's an affront to the undying Queen Vlacketh. Gith's son died to Voss's blade. Orpheus is no more. It is not just improbable, it is impossible. Kithrak Voss and his red dragon slayed the fell prince. You could no more resurrect him than you could glue together the pile of ashes he became. My Vash taught that the silver bells of Vlacketh's court still ring out before every hunt in celebration of the prince's defeat. As a child, I longed to hear them for myself and sing in praises to the deathless queen and her Kithraki. Tiamat's emissary. It was he who carried word that Mother Gith had negotiated the gift of the dragons, and that Vlacketh the First would preside as queen of the Githyanki. The Thalaman remains the queen's consort to this day, as endless as the empire he now serves. Anything more? I swear, I can already feel a change in the air. Like the curse itself knows its time is short. I can't say for certain, but we'll see it come to pass long before this place recedes behind us. <laughs> Don't worry, all is at hand. We can depart whenever you're ready. I would not linger in this land over long, but whatever your business, I will aid you if I can.
There comes a time when every precious young master must triumph over scrutiny. Had you excelled instead of resisted, you would have received a disgusting prize already. But it's not too late yet. <laughs> your perfect instincts force your knife arm. <laughs> you know that well from the Bard. You will do something divinely unspeakable on this eve. Your betters are no fans of the company you've been keeping. An example must be set. He thinks he might end the world. But you and I could do far worse. I won't lay so much as a talon on him. I wouldn't rob you of that delight. Your clever mind is penning tragedy as we speak. Your repressed urge yearns. To kill. And kill you will. Tonight, the moment you close your eyes, your favorite person will be brutalized. You know there is murder slumbering within you. And in controlling it, it has grown insatiable. Your dark urge will have death tonight, one way or another. There was much uh, disappointment at your reluctance to kill the little moon maiden. You could kill this one Deliberately. I'm sure it will be considered a great show of goodwill. The tithe could still be yours. I do not doubt you will act with a decorum befitting one of your rank. Good night, sweet lord. Your companion rests blissfully, without a fear in the world. As your hand approaches his body, it wavers. It longs to close around his throat. Disgusting hour to seek a chinwag, you know? Wait. I'm not sure I like the look in your eyes. What's wrong? I see. Fast as in right now, I assume, rather than first light after some sleep fast. You better tell me all. As you tell your story, fatigue fills your body. Your head swims with the worst headache you've known. Dangerous secrets are best shared with those who depend on you. I should know. We're in this together, theoretically. You should have confided in me sooner. I certainly cast the butchery of Alfira in a new light, but we'll find a solution for this. You and I. Suddenly you become drowsy. Your vision blurs and floods with yellow bile, and you faint in a dizzy blur. You are not yourself. All control is gone. Easy there. Your mind is your own, as are your limbs. Don't do anything rash.
steady. You can rein this in. Nobody's getting hurt. Gratitude can wait. You're not out of the woods yet. Stay focused. The night passes sick and sweating, but bloodlessly. You once again inhabit your own mind. I think I see the madness slipping from your eyes. Looks like I won't be joining Alfira just yet. Welcome back to the land of the Lucid, where explanations are owed, if you don't mind. This is surmountable, I'm sure. I'll protect you until you prevail. Chin up, or best this. Well, whatever it is. At least there's no shortage of enemies out there for you to kill. A veritable feast for the violent at heart. Ah, oh, that potion did not go down well. Disturbed and disturbing night for all of us, but worth it. With due diligence, your impulses will soon be mastered, or at least prevented from causing further harm. Now, as the saying goes, what's left undone should be left unspoken. Is there some lighter subject you wish to discuss? Oh, you know me, never the optimist. I'm trying to focus on the positives. The truth is, I was living on borrowed time already. Consuming those items would only have kept the orb sated for so long. If anything, I feel more at peace than I have in months. At least now I know my death will have purpose. It won't be a distant bang in the footnotes of history. hardly hold you responsible for what you do while unconscious. But still, I'll sleep with one eye open. Better safe than, well, dead. I know you have your personal demons to contend with. But if I didn't make it clear before, I think you can beat this. Just don't give in. And seek help if you need it. You wanted something?
I'm ready. Get on with it.
How many die today? How many die tomorrow? Am I? What's going on?
for battle. Whatever it takes. Intestines throb, blood whispers. I've got a long road ahead. I'm ready. Hmm. 
shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. I can do better. I must. What's next, I wonder?
Wits and blades always sharp. thing. Pull yourself together. Like it's will be done. <sighs> no time to rest. Do you know what happens when a devil is struck down on this charming plane of existence? It returns to the hells, to the very point where it last stood before venturing to whichever devil-forsaken plane it died on. In the case of our friend Yergir, the Orthon you so handily dispatched in the Temple of Shah, he manifested in my house of he returned to me chastened but intact. His wounds healed, his body restored. He thought I would dismember him, but he has his uses. So instead, I am re-educating him. We delivered the devil. Now I want what I'm owed. We had a deal. Indeed we did. I discovered all there is to know about those scars of yours. It's a rather grim tale. <laughs> Even for my tastes. As you wish. Brace yourself, Astarian. We're about to unveil your destiny. Carved into that ivory skin of yours is one part of an infernal contract between the archdevil Mephistopheles and your former master, Kazador Zar. In full, the contract states that Kazador will be granted knowledge of an infernal ritual so vile it has never been performed. The rite of profane ascension. It promises to be a marvelous ceremony, very elaborate, incredibly ancient, and entirely diabolical. If he completes the rite, he will become a new kind of being, the Vampire Ascendant. All the strengths of his vampiric form will be amplified, and alongside them he will enjoy the luxuries of the living. The arousals and appetites of man will return to him. And unlike Astarian, 
He will have no need of a parasite to protect him from the sun. But the ritual has its price, as all worthwhile things do. Lord Cazador will need to sacrifice a number of souls, including all of his vampiric spawn, if he is to ascend. Imagine how he felt then, when one of those precious spawns simply disappeared into thin air. The only missing ingredient is Astaria. You are the final piece he requires to complete the ritual. Your scars bind you to it. Your soul will set off a very wave of death, bringing Cazador his twisted life. And that, my tragic and toothsome friend, is that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have business elsewhere. Do you think it's so simple? I hate how right you are. I knew he wouldn't leave me alone, even when I was just another wretched toy for him to play with. But if I'm the key to this power he craves, he'll hunt me to the ends of Faerun. I need to take the fight to him, and I need you to help me. Once we deal with the tadpole, I'll be back to my nocturnal self. When you're being hunted by vampires, the dark is the worst place to hide. I need to deal with Kazador when I still have any kind of advantage over him. Thank you. Swift as my feet can carry me. It seems like Cazador used Astarian's flesh not as a canvas, but as a contract. We haven't heard the last of this, I'll wager. You wanted something? I'm sorry. It might be best kept until later. Yes? What do you know about me? You spoke of my past, being chased by wolves. I told no one about that. Almost no one. But I certainly didn't share that with you. There is nothing I can tell you that you do not already know yourself. They trained you well, trained you hard. Chiseled away any part of you that did not fit their plan. They made you forget. I chose to do that. For the mission to protect Shaz... Secrets. Yes, yes, that is an old song, girl. Your goddess cares more for her precious secrets than she does her devotees. Get to the point. When you freed me, you severed a bond between me and that dog, Thorm. A bond of pain. His, inflicted on me. When I laid eyes on you, I sensed a similar bond. You, tethered to two others. Someplace distant. Let me help you remember. You feel Shadowheart's mind tug at the edges of your own. You know this sensation. She wants you to see whatever is about to be revealed. Your mind joins with Shadowheart's. 
Something pulls at you both, bringing you elsewhere. in your memory. Teachings about Salunite rites of passage, about how they would abandon their children out in the wilds and force them to find their way home. It seems that one child never came back. She was taken. What? Who was that man? You already know. Did you not see yourself in him? Do you not recognize your own blood? Father. That was him. That is him. He lives still. And your mother, too. No. It can't be. I'm an orphan. And who told you that? Your adoptive family? You are not to blame. You were young. Impressionable. They took you because they wanted to break and remake you. But you are a child no longer. You are a woman. One who knows what must be done. My parents... I need to save them. Your parents are with your abductors. You will need to return to their lair. But be warned. You may have once thought of them as comrades, mentors, friends, even lovers. They will all be enemies now. You have been forewarned for what is to come. But not yet forearmed. The spear. How do you have it? I threw it into the shadow fell. Shar is quick to discard whatever she has no use for. I think you know that well enough. But I felt it call to me as I took flight. Whatever Shar calls her own, Saluna has equal claim to. They are one and the same. Their power is matched and mirrored. Take it. You will find it useful. What you do with it, that will be up to you. Same as before. I'll need every advantage, it seems. Thank you. A debt repaid. You returned my life unto me. Now go and claim your own. <laughs> it hurts. Shah torments you still. What a spiteful creature she is. This will not stop until you take action. See that your parents' sacrifices are not in vain. Allow the Moon Maiden to guide you at last. Be gone, friend. I have a darling to adore. I am free. You must face them. I will help. Pray, ask, and I will tell. Looking forward to a bit of rest, if I'm... Most pleasant traveling with company, if you ignore all the less pleasant aspects. So, 
And here I was, worried I'd be the only one with a difficult family reunion waiting in the city. dog wags his tail, a small bag clenched between his teeth. He gives in and surrenders his find to you. Scratch's tongue lolls out happily, his tail wagging even faster. I've been lied to my whole life. And I was gullible enough to just believe it my parents are alive and I have to save them I think a part of me always knew that a part that Shah denied to me indeed but the truth may yet prove painful who knows what Shah still keeps from me we'd better press on for now and hope we're ready when the moment comes. But before that, there's one thing I need to see to. You will see for yourself soon enough. Just leave it with me. As you choke down the acrid mushroom, a memory embraces your unlovable carcass. You see a grand collection. Shelves of jarred, floating, pickled organs neatly labeled. Taxidermied beasts and men, elegantly displayed from your killings. A study, no doubt, arranged neatly by your gentleman's gentle goblin. As you and your butler perform a vivisection, Scalaritas's claws slips, Caliphus cutting the aorta of the living, screaming victim. His tears mingle in with the golden fountain. As the memory begins to clear away, one thing is certain. The butler lies not about his past service. Be gone, friend. The curse has been lifted. The land's cleansed of the shadows. Catherick's reign of living death is over. Your courage has been tested, and in this, at least, you have triumphed. Sergeant, if you are here, I presume Worm's Rock is secure, and preparations for my inauguration are complete. No, Lord Gortash. We were interrupted. Another quake in the lower city. More severe this time. So you came cowering to my chambers? 
I'm flattered, Sergeant. But even I cannot command natural phenomena to cease. Forgive me, my lord, but there is panic in the streets. The people are afraid. Perhaps the people would be calm if you kept your nerve. I expect better from the flaming fist than to run scared from a slight tremor in the earth. Get back to your duties. Duties, duties, duties. Patrolling and saluting and following and bowing and scraping. Yes, sir. No, sir. Rip and cut your throat, sir. Your plan is falling apart, Lordling. Give me a reason not to cut you to ribbons. Control yourself, Orin. We need to focus on reuniting the stones or the brain will break free. These quakes are just the start. Neither of us expect prison bearers to kill Catherick. They'll be traveling to the city. Let's make sure we give them a Baldurian welcome. My prodigal bloodkin is among them. They live? <laughs> Barely. I made men of their ugly mind matter. And if they dare return, I will strip out their awful. Beyond the campsite, the city waits in uneasy silence, one sleep away. I wasn't expecting it, but I'm glad to have some company on this journey. The Absolute should be a thing of the past, and I with it. Yet, at the risk of angering Mistra further, I'm glad it didn't come to that, given what has come to light. Indeed. Under other circumstances, I might have been subdued or ashamed. But after what we saw, I must admit, I'm excited. The Elder Brain, but more importantly, the crown that it wore. Even without seeing it for myself, I could sense it. Netherese magic, so pure, so complete. I doubted what I was feeling at first. Most Netherese artifacts contain only the faintest amount of their former power, the ghost of an echo of a memory. That crown was different. I can't fathom how such a wonder survived. Surely everything of its ilk was destroyed along with Netheril itself, but no matter, it exists. I must learn more of it. We need to learn more about what we saw. 
An artifact as powerful as that crown must have been documented somewhere. As luck would have it, we'll soon find ourselves near one of the finest book collections this side of Candlekeep, Sorcerer's Sundries. I need to go there and learn all I can. Ha! Sorcerer's Sundries is no mere trading post. It's been serving the arcane community for centuries. Their collection of rare tomes is unparalleled. <laughs> Nether East texts are hardly commonplace, but I'm certain they'll have one or two stashed away. You'll have to forgive my eagerness, but if my suspicions prove to hold water, this could be the answer to all our problems. The events of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. They mean to use it to take control of the Sword Coast. All who carry the Tadpole are governed by the brain and by extension the Chosen. It will take but one order to transform them into an army of mind flayers. This would have been your fate too, were it not for the astral prison and the mysterious visitor inside of it. With her help, you have uncovered the cult for what it really is. A plan of conquest orchestrated by the gods of death themselves. Together, you have the power to thwart the dead three. If you follow this path to its end, the Elder Brain will not answer to the Chosen. It will answer to you. And what then? You are prone to impulses as uncontrollable as the gods themselves. Will you even have a say in what you do? Will you liberate the true souls from their parasites and their religious delusions? Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? You will not have long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. But sleep is not for you. your way to the portal. I need your help.
taking position. I can't do this without you. Time to strike. Let my name be known. No time like the present. We will all become thralls.
not over. Come to the skull. I need you. It's not over. Come to the skull.
this. Don't look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the absolute. It's obscene to owe my life to a damned gay. No more lies, no more tricks. I will have answers. If I'd known you would be so open minded, I would have saved myself a lot of effort. But I'm glad you're not here to judge. It's like I said before, I'm just like you. An adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate, though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure, to a colony of Mind Slayers who called Changed me into what I am now. For years, I served the Elder Brain, the one you know as the Absolute. I was a thrall like any other, but I was fortunate. I broke free and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals. Unglamorous, but there are plenty of them, rarely missed, and they fueled me while I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stelmay. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield, the largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People refer to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence, though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while, until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call the Emperor. The name was intended as a slight, to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. Indeed. His hubris knows no bounds. To enslave me, that was his nature. But to enslave an elder brain, a questionable decision. I shall look forward to sharing his downfall. We fought to tame Prince Orpheus, the son of Gith herself. 
possible. He was slain by Shastil Kithrak himself. Quite possible, I assure you. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus' his mother to bring about the fall of the Illithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus' his mother left, a usurper took her place. Blacketh declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Blacketh wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prison. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my hold on that prince. And if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. No. God has sent me on a mission to retrieve the Astral Prison. I was one of many, but the first to find it. How Gortash or the other Chosen learned of its existence, I do not know. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside, and found Orpheus. I realized what the prison was for. Containment. While my body was within the prison's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. Most certainly Orpheus. He is a threat to her reign. Some Githyanki still revere him, in defiance of their teachings. Blacketh was safe as long as they believed him to be dead. But as you can see, he is very much alive. I don't understand. The histories claim the prince was burned to ash in the skies. Your histories are fabrications. The prince was not killed. As you can very well see, he was in prison. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blacketh will be finished. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, you would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, he feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid. A sworn enemy. Just like me. I'm glad you think so. I agree. But there is one thing that you have that I do not. My original body was destroyed when I transformed. Yours continues to limit you. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent lithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. You will be able to do 
things you never thought were possible. There will be physical alterations, of course, but only partial. You will retain most of your current form, and you will soon see that the benefits outweigh any perceived. Whatever this geek offers is no gift to you. You continue to surprise me. Your mind is truly something special. Now, hold out your hand. It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. It must commune with another. A tadpole, nurtured by the psionic energy of the astral plane, cocooned here for millennia, it has become extraordinary. A coldness seeps through your veins as the tadpole awakens. It's yearning almost unbearable. Your mind is a veritable feast. The tadpole's essence courses through you. Where it touches, your flesh, glands, organs contract and flood with pure thought. You feel different. Your body has never felt more connected. Your mind present in every flex of a joint or muscle. You are exquisite. When your allies see what you can do, I hope you encourage them to try it for themselves. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The Brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the Brain, and bring it under our control. Despite everything. Please. How much farther can I go?
maybe. Go to the city. Try out your new form. Enjoy. Only son. He lives. It is not the Gaith visitor that Vlacketh would destroy and Voss would set free. It is Orpheus. The blood of the mother. The prince of the comet. Listen close. The Emperor spoke only in half-truths. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Vlacketh. Long ago, when we rose up against our gay slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Tiamat gifted the Githyanki our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlacketh our ruler. The first Vlacketh of many. It is Vlacketh 157 whom my people now call Queen. Yes. Our current queen has claimed undeath and reigned for a thousand years. But it was the first whom Orpheus tried to slay. Orpheus was, is, Gith's only son. He led his mother's own honor guard in a coup against Vlacketh I. It was Kithrak Voss himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or so the Varshas teach us. Yet the prince of the comet's been with us. Subdued by that repugnant illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would tear Vlacketh's empire to pieces and build new glory from the scraps. The seed and the sower. Every word Voss spoke, he spoke true. Orpheus is the living proof of the Queen's lies and the living weapon that conquered our Gaith slavers. One word from his lips, and the people would doubt. Two words, and they would rage. Three words, and they would bow to the true heir. If the Githyanki are to be free, the Prince of the Comet must lead the way. What about him? The Emperor may be loathsome, but it's right. 
Orpheus can disrupt a gay hive mind. A talent like that makes the prince a powerful shield and a powerful weapon. Why destroy a weapon like that when you can contain it in a relic and keep it for yourself? A weapon is only an asset for as long as it isn't pointed at you. The means of Vlakith's own end has been ripped away from her. Better to have Orpheus killed than to risk his escape. Better to risk the rise of Illithids than let the Prince of the Comet deny her the godhood she craves. Orpheus is honor guard, loyal to the end. Trapped by Vlakith in the same prism holding their noble prince, fruitlessly hacking at the sphere that contains him. They see us as geich, tadpoled husks in the Empress' thrall. I regret their deaths, but I pledge to live as they perished, in the service of Gith's son. The historical slates describe Orpheus as a fearsome, terrible creature, Powerful beyond measure, and enthralled by the Geich. So mad with power, he'd smash through the Githyanki Empire and deliver the shards to his illithid masters. And glowing with such psionic force that he and his red dragon blazed a trail through the skies. A lethal comet careening towards my people. Lies, of course. Vlakith spread a false image of Orpheus as monstrous betrayer, and her knights as the butchers who sliced him through. She was right to fear him, I'll grant her that. So great is the comet, it could shatter her reign. Very... So, there's been a mind flayer inside the artifact, or astral prism, the whole time we've had it. Sounds like utter madness, even though I've seen it with my own eyes. The more I learn, the less I understand just why I was sent to retrieve that thing. But it matters little now. I do not serve Shah anymore, nor the Mother Superior. The prism is no longer my mission. Saving my parents is. But I digress. Did you want something? Be honest. What do you think of the new look? I'm glad. Though... I don't think I'm quite done with the past yet. Not until I've been to Baldur's Gate. I wasn't expecting it, but I'm glad to have some company on this journey.
We must find where Gortash and Orin have established themselves, and take their nether stones. Baldur's Gate is right over the hills. And so is Cazador. Cazador and his right of profane ascension. An imperious soiree, attended by devils and spawn alike. A grand ceremony to honor one exalted vampiric master. And elevate him to an unfathomable station. To place him in a position of such esteem. The world will yearn to kneel and offer their necks. Of course I envy him. Why wouldn't I? The problem with what Cazador has done is that he did it to me. If the time comes and I can stay one move ahead of him, I'll take his place before his blood can hit the floor. <laughs> What's a handful of the wretched servants? If they're anything like me when I was enslaved, they're all but begging for death anyway. After 200 years of shit, pure shit, I think I deserve something better. We'll be glorious both, you and I. You'll have your day too. Let's find out more about the ritual before we waltz into Cazador's front door. If we track down my old comrades, the other spawn, we may discover more and be finely positioned for yours truly to ascend. My, my, you sweetheart. Then there isn't a moment to waste. If we don't find my brethren, they'll find us. Likely with bared fangs. We should get to them first. Then we can make their pretty tongues talk. Unless Cazador has changed their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town, seeking prey.